Alright. Hey guys, Damian Erskine here. Um, I got a good question via Twitter from a D Persode 23, who's a bass player in Toronto, I believe. And uh, it prompted me to kind of want to make a little video. So he said, um, I love your phrasing. What are some of the things you did to make your phrasing sound more organic and melodic? <clears throat> and actually, that's a lot of what I work on when I practice. So I thought I'd just do a little video and uh, just hope that I can uh, impart some of that, or at least uh, show you how I work on it. Um, I don't know if he's talking specifically soloing or... Um, just playing bass, but I tend to work on it in the same way. Um, generally, I, I just work with melody over changes, like like all my videos say. So a lot of it, a lot of the work I do at home is soloing, and then it translates to bass lines later on. Um, but the thing I always focus on is playing with the band, playing to the song, and making sure that I'm not just playing for myself and not just trying to show off, but always focusing on what really sounds good musically as if I'm listening to it. Um, and you know, sometimes I just get into licks and showy stuff just because that's a part of it and it's fun. But I, I'm always trying to serve the tune. Um, so a couple of points I wanted to make, especially with regard to soloing, um, the two most important parts of a line are where you begin and where you end. And there's a lot of wiggle room in the middle there um, to get away with stuff harmonically or to do different things. And typically a big part of what makes those things work is the phrasing. You can play the simplest notes in the world, you can play a major scale, but if you play it in just the right way as it relates to the song, um, it's going to sound fantastic. So often what I, what I do, let me pull up a little chart here. Um, I might start, and I do this with tunes, um, with, you know, there might just be one or two chord vamp for a long time, and then I'll start to kind of condense my ideas and try them over lots of changes, too. Say, like a Coltrane tune or something where there's lots of changes moving around and try the similar, similar approach. Um, but essentially what one thing I do is to um, really just let, let the changes happen and try and come up with rhythmic motifs um, and then move them through the changes. Now, if I'm having trouble soloing over a tune, I might back it off to the point where I'm not even playing, but I'll actually sing the melody I want to hear. And this particularly helps in tunes with lots of changes and kind of fake play along with myself just to hear what I want to hear and then try and do it with my fingers. Um, so first, let me do this tune. Uh, we'll do Maiden Voyage just because it's kind of more open. And I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. And then we'll move to something else with more changes and uh, talk about other approaches. So here's Maiden Voyage. Alright, we're back. Sorry, you may notice I have headphones on now. All of a sudden I realized that um, my bass was running direct and I wouldn't be able to hear it. <laughs> so, sorry for the quick edit. Here you go. I'm going to try to focus on rhythmic motifs moving through the changes of Maiden Voyage. Now this, this tune is mostly sus chords. And um, I tend to, with sus chords, I tend to play, I primarily think minor from the fifth just to let you know. Um, so when I see a D sus, uh, if I'm playing bass, I'm thinking D sus, um, which is suspended fourth. And I'll be careful and intentional with my usage of uh, either major or minor thirds. I'll make them to re relate to the line somehow to make sure they work. But when I'm soloing, I tend to just essentially think minor from the fifth. So over D sus nine, I might actually be thinking C minor. I mean, sorry, A minor. I'm trying to talk and look at something at the same time. Um, D sus, A minor, essentially. Um, always being aware of the qualities, D sus nine, so I know that that, a, that E, the nine of the D, is gonna be a nice note to use, but since I'm thinking A minor anyway, that's a note I'd probably land on naturally, regardless. So let's hope I'm relatively in tune, close enough. And let's do a little playing. Rhythmic motifs. Thank 
basic idea on that um, just trying to lock in listening for little motifs and locking into them and seeing if I can develop them and trying to listen to where they might want to go uh, sometimes successfully sometimes not um, now one other thing I may do through changes and then these changes are kind of long so this might work best over something um, say Stella by Starlight is take one pattern and practice moving it through page, uh, the changes it could be, um, uh, you know, an initial scalar shape or, or chord tone, or arpeggio that you that you come up with, um, but then taking that basic shape and moving it up and down the neck through the changes, to, and altering the notes appropriately to re to reflect those changes. Um, so let's see. Um, so I'll take something like on that E minor seven flat five. And try and move that through the changes a little bit. Let's see if I can do this. That's kind of a, a pattern that my hands really like and I tend to probably play it too much. But I'll show you what that is and then show you how you can practice trying to move something like that through changes. I think I came up with that um, uh, playing over a minor chord and I started playing the five, three, one, five, flat seven. So over an E minor, I'm playing B, G, E, B, D. I wound up uh, playing around with it and shifting it, so basically adding some open strings here and there to make it comfortable for my fingers and kind of be able to loop it around on itself. So I'm hitting, and the open strings don't matter in the context of a line this fast. Open strings don't matter all that much because um, they're kind of fleeting. They're just more of an effect than they are a harmonic statement. So on this lick, I'm going B, open D, G, E, B. Flat seven. And that E and B I'm kind of rolling using one finger. So when I come up with something like that, I'll practice moving it through a harmony. Um, say if we're in C major. 
and I'm playing that lick. So now I'm playing seven, five, three, seven, uh, nine. Now I'm gonna try and move it down the neck in, let's say, C major. And change the shape to make sure that I'm always hitting notes in C major. Sorry, I had to resolve that. Um, so, and likewise, I was saying uh, I was in E minor before. So now it's going to be kind of the same thing running down, except I'm going to have to hit an F sharp instead of an F natural. Hit a C natural sharp there by accident. Um, but I'll take, you know, if I come across some little lick like that that I like, I'll practice moving that up and down a scale. And when I get kind of comfortable with it, I might try it through changes, where it's not just one, you know, diatonic lick moving up and down a scale. <clears throat> it's shifting with the harmony of the song. So let me slow this down just a little bit and see if I can do something with that through here. in between as long as you start strong and land strong. The, the landing, sticking the landing is really the important part, but everything in between has to be kind of in the pocket as well. I could even take a pattern like that and go outside the room and you just do it, say half six. <laughs> Most of that was outside of the harmony, but because I was moving it in half steps, so I gave it a context of its own, which is also important if you're going to go outside the harmony, playing outside. Um, so it's shifting a pattern in half steps, but then resolved it strongly to the C minor and then to the F7. That's the key. So that's kind of tangential, but that's one way um, a lot of people ask me, how do you play outside? And that is um, one way you can start experimenting with things taking symmetrical shapes of any kind, moving them in a way to give them their own context and then landing strongly. <clears throat> but that's a, that's a complete tangent uh, to what we're talking about, which was developing phrases. Um, and uh, one thing I would suggest is that you also transcribe a lot of bass lines and figure out a lot of licks and lines that you hear that you like, that strike you in some way, and, and, and try and internalize them. Because it really, and it, always keep it musical, really focus on playing getting the energy, not just the notes, but getting the energy of the line and articulating it the way it should be articulated. Because really, um, rhythm and phrasing and time is 80% of it, um, as far as like playing nice melodies and playing a good, strong, melodic phrase. Um, melodic essentially just means that it's inside the harmony and resolves well. So if you understand the notes that you can play over a chord and you resolve them well, that part's pretty much taken care of, and the rest comes down to uh, rhythm and timing. So, for example, I could play. Okay, but it doesn't really strike you. But if I take that and I really focus with how I'm going to articulate every note, maybe the little bends and the you know make sure the time's dead on. Um, I don't know exactly what I played, but I was basically just playing off of the arpeggios. But instead, if I went. <laughs> Yeah, then it starts.
stretched the sound a little more, a little more melodic, and all of the notes were uh, pretty much completely reflective of the chord changes there. The only difference was playing a line kind of insecurely and not with not real, no real conviction or um, um, emotion. You know, not emoting through the notes with vibrato and really making each note sing a little bit. Um, like I did in the second time, where I played with authority, I tried to emote more with my notes and think of phrases that related to each other. Um, so that's that's essentially my process: um, transcription and um, exploring rhythm through harmony. Um, let's say if we take a tune. Like, uh, eh, it's hard to play over. <laughs> All right, we'll take a tune like Moments Notice. Um, fast. It's a fast moving tune. Now let's do a, uh, let's do more, let's say blue and green. And let's say I'm having trouble playing through this tune. This is very slow, 55. And I'm not sure what to play. Let's say these some of these chords might be throwing me off. I'm thinking sharp nine. And I'm, you know, fumbling around a little bit. I might ditch the harmony and just start listening. And I can't sing at all, but this is what I'll do for myself to help me start to hear what I might play. You know, start to try and just hear little phrases. And you know, when you start to sing a line, you're, you're Ears know what good melody is. It's often, you know, we start thinking of playing and we start listening to the music. So if you start just trying to hear melody in your head before you start playing, that can be very helpful and just kind of get you in the zone. Now also on shifting changes like this, I will also put a lot of emphasis harmonically on the notes that are changing from chord to chord because those, those seem to be, those tend to be a little more effective because you're reflecting the change in the harmony. And you're really, that's what gets you really playing the, the tune, playing the changes. things can help you. That's the basic idea. 
Um, one more thing I'll mention is that I also work a lot with the drones and loops. Um, and just playing against a drone. Um, I usually try and set one up like I have an application, iTabla Pro, that has a nice, great rhythms and drones I can play along with, or set up some kind of loop. And literally just one note. And hear how all of the other notes sound against it. Play with the chromatic scale. And hear when you're holding an E, what the nine and F sharp sounds like. Try and hear what those notes want to do a little bit and what they the kind of harmony they imply. Like that sounds very kind of dark and minor, so I immediately wanted to play in G natural over that E, E minor instead of going. It just seemed like it didn't fit the vibe of what I was already playing. sounds like let me hit a natural seven major seven to me it sounds like that major seven is there to make the root sound good makes me want to go there always get kind of random and just play around with harmony play with tension and release and trying to feel tension and interpret how to release that tension harmonically so there's some there's some basic ideas play with uh, shapes over changes rhythmic motifs especially moving rhythmic motifs through changes and then trying to do a little call and response with yourself rhythmically um, those are some of the best ways I can think of to work on melodic playing um, and don't don't forget um, you know the real book you've got however many, 600 of some of the best mel jazz melodies ever written, um, start learning some of them and start playing, learning them over tunes and hearing how they make use of chord tones, non-chord tones to achieve that melodic, you know, that melodic statement. Um, so learning melodies and hearing melodies is, is the best way. Learning melodies is the best way to start hearing melodies and that's the best way to learn how to play melodically over changes I'd say so just uh, get explorative <clears throat> there are no wrong answers when you're practicing you know it's all just trying to figure stuff out and uh, and just have fun doing it all right thank you